The classic gaming community has really come into its own in recent years with a huge selection of websites, homebrew game developers, and video content creators who avidly support the community as a whole. Although many of the people within this community are not only passionate, but work well together in keeping the spirit of classic gaming alive, there are a few who tend to abuse the trust that is often placed in members for their own personal gain. One of these people in particular has been plaguing the classic gaming community for years, causing strife wherever he goes. Kieran Hawken, who has gone by a number of different handles on various websites, but who is currently best known as the creator of the Laird's Lair YouTube channel, has been a thorn in the side of many true classic gaming enthusiasts, website administrators, homebrew game developers, and YouTube content creators for quite some time now. Wherever he goes, he leaves behind a trail of lies, slander, and self-promotion at the expense of others, causing irreparable harm in many cases. Although he has self-styled himself as an expert in classic gaming, he is anything but often displaying a level of knowledge that is clearly cursory and substandard when compared to many more passionate and knowledgeable. Even worse is the fact that he has a history of taking credit for others' work, plagiarizing Wikipedia and other sources, passing it off as his own, pulling out the victim card whenever he is called out. The list of various trespasses he has committed against many members of the community is vast, but can be broken down to four main categories. 1. Stealing credit for games created by others. 2. Defamation of prominent website owners and game developers. 3. Pirating games while accusing others of doing the same. 4. Various trolling and, of course, lies. All four of these categories boil down to one indisputable fact. Kieran Hawken lies about everything. In fact, he lies so frequently that it is actually difficult to find a genuinely verifiable fact that he has stated in any of his various videos, books, and other online postings. Most people who have been privy to his lies over the last few years now automatically view anything he says with a high degree of skepticism. If he were to tell you water is wet, you would want a second opinion. We will take a look at some of the various transgressions that Mr. Hawken has committed in each of these categories. Please keep in mind that the ones we look at today are only a tiny subset of all of the various misdeeds he has committed over the years, as a more comprehensive list would literally take hours upon hours to talk about. All of these incidents are based on fact without any speculation or conjecture, showing his own words. We will also provide proof that contradicts his claims in the form of screenshots and links to the source material in order to let you, the viewer, judge the veracity of his claims yourself. For more detailed information on his various lies, we will be including a link to a forum post that goes into far more detail. Now, before going into said details, it should be noted that Mr. Hawken has used a variety of screen names on different forums and websites, yet, due to the trail of lies that he has spread, it has been easy to link them all together, which is listed here for your reference. So, without further ado, let's get started. 1. Stealing credit for games created by others. Mr. Hawken got his start in the classic gaming community many years ago by joining various forums and claiming to have written a number of games for several old computers, namely the ZX Spectrum and the Atari ST, even going so far as to put his name by a number of different games on an Atari ST game database. One by one, many of the original authors of the games ended up disputing his claims, which upon closer examination were clearly false. Of course, this wasn't limited to just putting his name on various games on the Atari ST database. He then made these claims on the World of Spectrum website, which were quickly cast into doubt, then verified by various users to be false. As a more thorough perusal of said thread on the World of Spectrum website will show, Kieran had every chance to come forward and admit his lies. Instead, he chose either to double down on them or further dispute the claims against him despite overwhelming evidence. One would think that a rational person would learn their lesson after these incidents. 
Instead, he decided to try such hijinks a few years later on the Atari Age website, where he claimed to be programming several games in BASIC for the Spectrum computer. With his credibility already severely lacking by this point, it didn't take long for someone to point out that his games were little more than lightly modified BASIC type-in listings from several books containing such programs for the Spectrum computer. Again, when confronted with evidence contradicting his spurious claims, Kieran instead doubled down on his lies while trying to deflect, which is a common tactic he takes. As you can see, he has clearly made a habit of stealing credit for others' work instead of creating his own original work. 2. Defamation of prominent website owners and game developers the various activities that Kieran has engaged in over the last few years has left him with plenty of enemies, due in no small part to his refusal to admit to any of his lies. Those who are the ones to speak up about him first are often immediately branded by him as troublemakers, yet he refuses to acknowledge his own part in any of the multiple problems that are constantly left in his wake. One of the biggest targets of his continuous ire over the years is Reboot, a highly prolific development team that has created many homebrew games and tools for the Atari Jaguar game console. As you can see here, Kieran claims that Reboot is responsible for a great deal of trouble in the Jaguar community, making an itemized list of claims against them without providing a shred of proof. While one may be tempted to take him at his word, a closer examination of these claims will quickly reveal them to be explicitly false. Let's take a look at a couple of the claims he makes here. Yes, they destroyed the Jaguar community and chased away the best developers. Anyone who has been a member of the Jaguar community since the late 90s or early 2000s would know that it has long been a cantankerous group of people. Drama existed there long before Reboot first appeared in 2008, with many of the developers listed there having already split away from others long before then. Even so, the Jaguar community is still going quite strong today, as can be evidenced by the high number of quality homebrew games that have been released for the system in the last 10 years, many of which have actually come from Reboot. Atari Age, as the single biggest Atari-related website in one of the largest and most prestigious classic gaming websites in the world, has had a few troublemakers over the years. Yet, it has been pretty difficult for members to be banned from there, even after multiple offenses. Despite this fact, Kieran, as well as several of his friends, managed to accomplish this in style, due to many of them causing disruption with their war against Reboot. How exactly any of Reboot's actions have led to destroyed marriages or lost jobs can only be left to one's imagination, as Kieran offers no proof of these allegations. One of the problems that Kieran has displayed over the years is his inability to distinguish different homebrew developers from each other. In this particular case, he is most likely referring to the U-235 sound engine for the Atari Jaguar, created by AA Forum member Linkovich who has never been a member of Reboot. As we can see here, Kieran is claiming that the U-235 sound engine uses code stolen from someone else. The problem with this claim would be immediately apparent to any developer who tried using both sound engines. Not only do the sound engines have different capabilities, but the same sounds played through each engine most often end up sounding slightly different. Furthermore, neither of the sound engines have been released in source form, so it is next to impossible to determine that they are similar in any way, even when disassembled. While Reboot has been one of the largest targets of Mr. Hawkins' ire, they are far from the only ones. As we can see here, Kieran did a video review of the Sega Megavisions magazine, giving it a largely negative review. What he failed to disclose was the fact that he had applied to be a writer for this very same publication, but had been rejected, as you can see by a comment left under the video by the editor-in-chief of the magazine. This incident alone should raise questions about Mr. Hawkins' Hawkins' journalistic integrity. 3. Pirating games while accusing others of doing the same. As we already saw earlier, Kieran doesn't seem to have a high opinion of anyone who sells other people's work for their own profit. Here is more evidence of this. 
Unfortunately, this appears to be yet another case of Kieran displaying his complete lack of integrity. One of the many ways that Kieran Hawkins supplements his income is by selling various gaming media through eBay, as can be seen here under the name Retro Originals. A quick perusal of the titles he has listed on his store will quickly reveal a variety of different games, videos, and demos for the Atari Jaguar game system. Unfortunately, he does not own the rights to sell any of this material, yet accuses others of doing the same thing. Hypocritical much? 4. Various Trolling and Lies After seeing some of the previous exploits of Mr. Hawken, it should come as no surprise that he has either been banned from or left on bad terms multiple classic gaming related forums. One of the sites listed here was another Atari Jaguar related site called Jaguar Sector 2, which is now defunct. Shortly before being banned from Atari Age, he denied having been banned from this site. Unfortunately for him, his attempt at obfuscation didn't work as other AA members had access to another forum and spotted his post where he admitted to having been banned after all. Surprisingly enough, he also had tried to deny being banned from Atari Age. Here he insinuates that he could return to Atari Age if he wanted. Of course, this would be difficult to do since his account on Atari Age is still banned. Score another one for Mr. Hawken in the lack of credibility column. Of course, his misdeeds don't just end with forum posts. Mr. Hawken has become a prolific author over the last few years, having published a variety of classic gaming related books, many of which are sold on Amazon. Without going into the veracity of the contents of these books, it should be interesting to note some of the reviews that have been left about his books. Not all of the reviews for his books are negative, true. In fact, there are plenty of overly enthusiastic positive reviews that quite obviously come from a sock puppet account. Using sock puppet accounts to try to give himself more credibility is behavior that Mr. Hawken has exhibited for years, even using such accounts on other forums to agree with whatever lies he was dispensing. Naturally, he has brought this practice over to reviews of his own books, as can be evidenced by the large number of positive reviews for his books by this Retro Girl account on Amazon. Keep in mind that there are no verified purchase tags by these reviews, clearly indicating that the reviewer didn't purchase them on Amazon, something that is often a hallmark of a sock puppet account. What is also not surprising is that there is a negative review left for a book that is similar in style and content to his own books in an effort to boost his own profile at the expense of others. Now, what's to say that this Retro Girl account belongs to Kieran? Just a quick inspection of the contents of many of the reviews makes it quite obvious to anyone who has known Mr. Hawken for more than a cup of coffee, thanks to the reviewer's statements of having grown up with both the ZX Spectrum, Atari ST computers, as well as their frequent trips to Tenerife, a place where Kieran has been known to spend time. Which, of course, leads us to one last incident regarding an article that Mr. Hawken wrote about the unreleased Atari Panther console in the Pixel Nation magazine. Considering his already sordid history of not letting the truth get in the way of a good lie, it's unsurprising to note that the article was full of inaccuracies. What was surprising, however, was that he was called out on this by none other than Leonard Trammell, former Atari executive and son of Jack Trammell. Conclusion? As we can see by the mountain of evidence presented in this video, Kieran Hawken is a veritable fountain of lies. As stated before, whenever he is confronted with evidence that contradicts his claims, he doubles down and deflects. Whenever that fails, he will dip into his well of excuses in order to deflect the accusations by bringing up his supposed mental and physical health problems. Although it is undoubtedly true that he does have some type of mental issue as evidenced by his inability to tell the truth, they are by no means an excuse for his bad behavior or mountains of repeated misdeeds that he has committed over the years. He tries to use whatever pitiful excuse he can to deflect attention away from his misdeeds instead of doing the honorable thing by admitting his mistakes and taking some personal accountability. Any type of illness, whether mental or physical, should never be used as a shield for bad behavior or to avoid taking responsibility for one's actions. 
Look, this video wasn't made to bully or harass Mr. Hawkins. No, it is meant to bring to light the various lies he has spread over the years. Lies which have not only tried to bolster his own reputation, but also to undeservedly tear down the reputations of others. We too hope that this video and its wide dissemination can serve as a wake-up call for Mr. Hawkin, bringing to light how his lies have hurt the community as a whole. While it won't right the wrongs that have been committed, taking steps to own up to his actions, apologizing for them, and making a conscious effort to be a productive force in the community would go a long way towards healing the rifts he has caused. Until that day happens, however, Others should be well aware to avoid having any dealings with Mr. Hawkin. Thank you for watching.